Welcome to uh, LTHS Physics. And uh, we got a universal gravitation example for you. Um, this one we're going to work out in variable form, which actually will make our life easier. We won't need a calculator. Um, and uh, this one is, is a little tricky uh, in the details. It's actually a pretty short problem, but it's a little tricky. Here's what we're going to do. Uh, imagine that we are launching a spacecraft from a latitude uh, of some angle theta. So like, for instance, Chicago. Uh, here in Chicago, we're at about the 42nd or 41st latitude, okay? And imagine we're, we're launching a rocket ship, and I want to launch it into a circular orbit. And I'll, I'll put a height up on the board in a second, okay? So I want to know how much energy, minimum, how much energy does it require for me to get the spacecraft off of the spinning Earth, and that's important, um, out to a circular orbit of height something, okay? And again, I want that ex I'm going to have that expression in terms of some givens. So we'll kind of sketch this out here. Um, got the Earth. All right. We're at some latitude. Okay. Now, a note on latitude. That's simply the angle above the equator that you're, you are. So for, for instance, the North Pole would be 90 degrees. The equator is zero degrees. That's all latitude is. It's just an angle. Um, and um, uh, we know, uh, oh, we want to launch such that the spacecraft starts here and then reaches a circular orbit. And let's say that height above the Earth's surface is 2 times the radius of the Earth. Now, real quick, how far from the center of the Earth are we going to be? 3 Earth radii. So you're going to need that in the equation. But I, I wanted to mention that real quick. So um, in terms of the following. The mass of the Earth, the mass of the ship, the period of the Earth. By the way, what is the period of the Earth? How long does it take the Earth to spin once around its axis? One day, um, which is a certain number of seconds. Okay. Um, so in terms of those things and the radius of the Earth, okay, I want to determine what's the minimum amount of energy needed to get the, the spacecraft from here into a circular orbit around the Earth, that's 2R above the Earth's surface. So we got an object moving from point A to point B. So we are going to use, you guessed it, conservation of energy. Okay? At point A, or we'll call that the, the starting point, okay, does our ship have kinetic energy? Well, it's on a spinning planet. The planet is moving in a circle. So the, the ship does have kinetic energy. So we're going to have a K naught. Okay? Since we are above the Earth's center, um, well, if we're anywhere, okay, we have potential energy. Where is gravitational potential energy zero? Well, when you use universal gravitation, you set gravitational potential energy equal to zero at infinity, which is way over there somewhere. So down here, we've got some negative potential energy. So I'll call that U naught. Okay. And I am going to do work to get the ship from here to here. That's what I'm trying to find. So we'll call that W. That would be non-conservative work. Um, and that's what I'm trying to find. That's my unknown. Afterward, when I'm here, I'm, I have changed my height. I'm still not at infinity yet. So I have a potential energy. I'll call that U final. And um, if I'm in orbit, I better darn well be moving. So I've got a kinetic energy final. Okay. Um, now, next step, um, we're going to do a couple shortcuts. Um, I, I will start by writing the individual terms, u naught. Okay, well, that's just gravitational potential energy. That's negative g, mass of the Earth, mass of the ship, over Re. We're starting Re away from, um, from the center of the Earth. Okay. Um, K naught. Well, this is the part that gets a little tricky. That's one half mass of the ship, v squared of the ship. Okay, how do you calculate the velocity of this point, Chicago? What's the velocity of Chicago as it orbits the center of the Earth? Okay, or not orbits as it rotates around uh, the center of the Earth. Okay, so um, well, velocity is two pi r over t for something going in a circle. Well, we know time. Time is one day. 
okay? And if you convert one day to seconds, well, for now, I'll leave it T. Um, later on, I'll go ahead and throw, uh, we can throw a value in there if we want. Um, but the, just, uh, just in case you were interested, that's 86,400 seconds. Now, for now, I'll leave it as just T, and then at the very end, if you want to put that in, we can, okay? What's R? Well, it's not the radius of the Earth, okay? If the ship were sitting on the equator, it would be the radius of the Earth. But we're sitting up here in Chicago, okay? Um, if we were at the North Pole, by the way, what would V be then? Well, velocity would be zero. You're just spinning in a circle once per day. You, you have no tangential velocity. Well, here at the, the 41st latitude, you have a radius, but it's not the radius of the Earth. The radius that we need is right there. That is the circle that our ship is making, okay? Well, how do you calculate that? Eh, it's really simple. Here's the hypotenuse, that is the radius of the Earth. We want the horizontal component of that. So the radius that we want is the radius of the Earth cosine of your latitude angle. That's the radius that, uh, of the, the circle the ship makes, okay? So that's what we're gonna plug in for little r right there. Okay, so we got this, we got this, we're trying to find that. K final plus U final, oh, we're taking a big shortcut on this one. In class, we talked about the following. If we are in a circular orbit, which is what I want there, okay, this shortcuts to the following. These two added together are negative G, mass of the Earth, mass of the ship, over 2R. Now, R being how far are we from the center of the Earth? Three Earth radii, okay? So I basically got all my terms. Um, all I got to do now is do a little bit of math and solve. So um, I'll plug each of these things in. By the way, this was all the work, okay? Figuring this out, figuring that out, figuring this out, figuring that out. That's all the hard stuff. Now we're just going to do a little bit of math to get W. All right. So. Having said that, okay, so K naught is one half mass of the ship V squared, which ends up being, um, it's two pi R. I'm going to square that, so it's four pi squared R squared, which is radius of the Earth squared, cosine squared of your latitude angle, all over T squared. Huh, that's a lot of work, huh? No pun intended. Uh, so we got one half m v squared, okay, plus negative g mass of the Earth, mass of the ship over radius of the Earth, okay. That's the potential energy at the beginning, plus w equals. At the end, we said that both the kinetic and potential, when you add them together for a circular orbit, only for a circular orbit, okay is negative g mass of the earth mass of the ship over I'll, I'll take the two times the three you get six r e okay and um we're just solving for w all right um if i take this and add over here um that's six over six minus one over six you get five over six so the w equals five big g mass of the earth mass of the ship over six Re, okay, minus this term here. When you move this over to there, it becomes negative. I will do a little bit of, of, of uh, simplifying down there. Um, the half and the four become a two. You got your pi squared. You got the mass of the ship, Re squared, cosine squared of your latitude over T squared. So that is the amount of work necessary to launch the ship from a latitude to a circular orbit, some height above the Earth's surface. Now, having said that, I want to make one note here. If the Earth was not rotating, this term would be zero, and that would be your work right there. Okay, so if the Earth was not rotating, that would be your answer. We are lucky. We get to do less work because the Earth is rotating. One more note on this. If the bigger this term is, the more negative this becomes, the smaller W has to be. What angle 
would give us this, make this term as large as possible, zero degrees. That's why um, most people that launch spacecraft try to launch them from as far or close to the equator as they can get reasonably. Um, of course, barring weather and stuff like that. So for instance, in the United States, we launch from Florida, um, mainly because that's the farthest southern part of our, of our United States. So we try to get as close to the equator as possible to make this number as big as possible, to make this number as small as possible, to save fuel. If you save fuel, you can put a bigger payload on top of that rocket to, and, and get a bigger satellite up into orbit. So I um, hope that was useful. Um, and again, if they gave you numbers, for instance, we know time is 86,400 seconds for the Earth to rotate once, um, and all the other numbers you know or, or would be given, like the mass of the ship, you'd have to obviously know. So um, hope that was helpful, and uh, enjoy, uh, enjoy universal gravitation. <laughs>